Hello ladies and gentlemen, hello beautiful people, this is the Technical Mind, my name is Alas, and welcome back to another video. So today's video, we're going to be going over today's patch notes. Um, pretty much just specifically just going over the operators for the patch notes. I'm not going to be going over the wind deltas for this season, um, or we're not going over the spe specific changes over like the, the gun, um, what's it called? Uh, recoil pattern and everything, we're not going to be going over that, we're just talking about the core beast operators and what do they change, what do they do to them, and I'm going to be giving my own thoughts, my own opinions on them. Uh, I think today is a good day for me to do that, um, because of course it just dropped, along with, I was originally going to do this video with friends, but time for me is really tight. I don't have a lot of time really to uh, set up a schedule with these, with my friends, and uh, actually have a conversation. Um, and also we did do this before, um, Thrilled and Mango, if you guys are watching this, uh, the reason why I'm not uploading that one is because Thrilled was the one talking a lot and Mango joined halfway through the conversation. So it just really wasn't like a good flow for the conversation. So I'm just going to do it solo. Um, obviously, uh, later on, if this ever happens again with more patch notes, we can be organized if I have more time to do so. Uh, anyways, we're going to jump right into this video. So first up, we have Ash. So Ash has reduced breaching around explosive damage range to do 2 meters from 3.5 meters. So they just reduce pretty much the explosion uh, range or the radius is what they're saying. Uh, and it's populated by the changes of casual, top ranked, and pros. I honestly mainly want to say this was changed by Pro League. I don't see, especially you don't see this in casual. Um, ranked, you see this in a higher level plays, mainly in Plat 2 or Plat 1. Uh, I don't especially see Plat 3s being smart enough to go underneath the site and to shoot a breaching round to destroy... Uh, like a Malusi Banshee or a, a, a deployable shield, right? You don't really see those at those kind of ranks. So that's what they're targeting. Um, according to the according to the balancing matrix, Ash continues to be the attacker with the highest presence, owing to her strong versatility. Specifically, the explosion range on her breaching round has made her effective utility deny from below, destroying gadgets in the top ceiling, floor ceiling, like Kahi's electric claws. By reducing this range, this will bring her versatility more in line with other attackers. So once again, pretty much what I was saying and just summed up, um, in Pro League and high level plays and ranked, you will see uh, people playing Ash and Sophia go underneath the site, destroy that utility in that way, so they avoid uh, the Jaeger ADS, the Wamai Magnets, and the Rooney Gates, which is very smart and it's a very good play, and of course they reduce that and they nerf that, so it's not as happening as often, or you can't do that at all. Alright, now I have Buck. So they increase Shotgun's total ammo to 31 from 26. So they gave him a few more shells and a skeleton key to open up the floor. Um, and they all also added heartbreak charge and they removed the claymore from him. In my opinion, it's really weird seeing a soft breacher having the ability to soft breach and hard breach at the same time. Um, honestly, I don't know how I feel about this change. I feel like Buck is fine with the claymores. I honestly don't know why they're changing so much. <clears throat> I'll just second secondary gadgets because uh, again he started off with nades since year one season one since literally the first season of this game six fucking years ago when this game was introduced and they decided to remove his grenades and give him a claymore instead now they're removing the claymore and giving him a heartbeat charge um i don't know what they're trying to do to him i don't know how or why they're making all these changes to him um but i don't know how i feel about giving him a heartbeat charge when he's already a soft breacher anyways they the populated target they made for this is pro league um, again, I have no idea why they take away the Claymore and gave him Heartbeat Charge. Further differentiating Buck from Sledge and highlighting his unique strategies as a Master of Destruction, we are increasing his utility with a Hard Breach Charge and additional Shotgun Ammo. Combined with his Stun Grenades, we expect the Hard Breach Charge to offer additional versatility and increase his presence in matches. As the Shotgun is less reliable, and then uh, Sledge's trusty hammer. The extra ammo will ensure bucks bring value to team compositions while accounting for the additional shots required, i.e. two shots required to destroy both layers of the floor. Okay, so I do like how they gave uh, Skeleton Key more ammo because I do feel like, one, I feel like a lot of people don't know how to play buck, even those buck mains. And they just randomly shoot up the fucking floor or the ceiling and expect something to happen you drain your ammo very fast because it's a 30 it was a 26 uh, round clip now it's a 30 uh, uh round clip or 30 uh shells in total i should say um but i do like it's two shots to require just to destroy the both the layers of the drywall or the wooden floors depending on what you're opening up of course 
Um, I feel like he's on more on par with Sledge, and of course he has the advantages of Sledge in terms of he can open up the ceiling, Sledge cannot do that with his hammer. So next up we got Echo. So they reduced the Yokai drone jump cooldown to 2 seconds from 3 seconds, so they made it faster. They reduced animation time when Yokai fall, fails to stick to the ceiling to half a second from 2 seconds, and they reduced the sonic burst cooldown to 16 seconds from 20 seconds. Uh, Populated target by this ca uh, change is casual, top ranked, and pro league. So they pretty much buff Echo. To sum it up, if you guys don't understand what I just said, they buffed Echo in terms of they made his yokai more flexible and a lot faster. And I like this because they already nerfed him to the point to where his yokais no longer have the invisibility um, for his yokai, of course. They're just like any other camera in the game. Like Dokubi's Black Eyes or <laughs> Dokubi's Black Eyes, Valkyrie's Black Eyes or Maestro's camera. It's no longer cloaked, it's just a normal camera. With this patch, we wanted to improve the way Echo's Yokai drone feels to use, focusing on the quality of life changes. Compensating for the removal of invisibility, players will find that the Yokai is more reactive to the commands and has a snappier feel. This empowers Echo to be more aggressive with its drone. So we like this. Fun fact, I also used to main Echo. I used to main Echo and Legion uh, back when I first started the game. Those are the only two operas I knew how to play because they were very annoying and they were very heavy uh, utility based because Legion, of course, he has eight goo mines that at first when you stepped on them, they took 10 damage and they uh, nerfed him. And same to Echo, they slowly nerf nerfed him as well. And I'm glad they're changing it out and giving his Yokai drone a buff while they took away his invisibility. I think there's a good change for Echo. I still think he's reliable in my opinion, and I still play him, and I still clutch rounds with him. Uh, the other day I got a 3k with Echo alone. So that just tells you how Echo is not useless. Ella is up next. So they removed the resistance to concussion effects, and they removed the extra, quote-unquote, mine while in the down but not out state. So concussion effects, meaning they removed the resistance to Zofia and Ella used to be able to resist each other's uh, concussion effects, meaning Grismas mine on Zofia, she would quicken and uh, concentrate further, more and quicker and faster than any other operator in the game would, and Ella would reflect that ability with her as well. So they both had that resistance, and now they both don't. So just to make it easier for you guys to understand, Ella and Zofia no longer have the advantage that they had over other operators. They get affected the same way. And they remove that extra mine while in the dominant state. Technically, Ella has four Grisma mines. She has three she can place down. And when she was knocked, she was given the option to trigger an extra mine. Which if any attacker in the area was to try to finish her, she can do that effect. Uh, and then a defender can try to refrag. And it'll make it easier on the refrag for the defender to get that kill. And now Ella does not have that ability anymore. Populated target by this change is casual top ranked in Pro League. Honestly, we all know what this is about. This is mainly change from Pro League. With this patch, we, intended, we intend to remove some of the hidden mechanics that are not explicitly explained and uh, are based on the character's lore rather than their balance. So what made this game fun and what made this game interesting to me is because of the whole lore effect, right? I remember when Echo was the only operator that on the defensive side that could not get a call from Dokubi because of that lore aspect. I believe Dokubi and Echo had a strong relationship and Dokubi did not want to hurt or harm Echo in any way, of course. Therefore, he was resistant to Dokubi's call and the only one for that matter. I like that. I like how Sophia has a withstand because, again, in her background and lore, I like how Ella had that concussion effect. It just made it special. You know, it gave them unique abilities. I like the, the hidden small unique abilities that these operators have. And in my opinion, you don't get the... When we get to Sophia, I'll talk more about this, but you don't get a good amount of chances or opportunities to actually use the withstand to the full potential, right? Maybe in like one... Every one in 100 uses you use the withstand, you might have something barely fucking happen. And if that, you have 5 HP when you revive yourself. So it's it's extremely rare when something like in that Pro League match happened um, to where something like that will happen. And so before, before moving on to Cali, they say also, additionally, we feel that removing these hidden mechanics help make the game easier to understand and learn from new players while retaining the quality players pick Ella for. So again, that's shitty to me because when I was a new player, we all had to learn this stuff, right? We all had to learn, again, about the whole Dokubi and Echo thing. We all had to learn that uh, Sophia was the only attacker that can pick herself up. 
Finke was the other one that can boost everyone on the attacking roster besides herself, which I find that extremely weird. Which is why, in my opinion, I think Finke um, should boost herself up as well. But who's to say, um, you know, why would you take away from Sofia in the first place if you're just going to give it to Finke? Again, I want to further go back into this when we actually talk about Sofia. I am really passionate about this game, which is why I get so mad at this kind of dumb shit. Anyways, moving on, Cali. Her sniper 300 base in damage set to 122. Wow. 100% damage until 25 meters and linear falls to 80% at 35 meters. Okay. This sounds like a nerf. I've seen other YouTubers call it a buff and they say they make it fair. And the way I am viewing it, I don't play Kali. I don't care about her. I don't mean her at all. I do have one. I do know one person that means her. Um, he actually wants me to make a video about her. Honestly, I, I can't really do that because I don't know much. I, I can't play her as well. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, I'm shitty, but I obviously know how she works. Anyways, though, so her sniper 300 base damage set to 122. That is shitty. Because um, now the max amount of damage she does is 122 damage instead of 300. And it's 100% damage until 25 meters, and then that's when the damage starts dropping off. Populated by this target is casual top during them pro league. Looking at our balancing matrix, Kali's low presence is due in part to a weapon that is considered underperforming. So I don't know why they consider underperforming, because Kali was always a one shot. Again, um, unless if she was too far away, it was a one shot to any armor operator in the defending team. To the chest, if it was a limb shot, you would take damage, but if it's a, bo a body shot to the chest. You down them and it requires another shot to finish them, which I like, which I think is strong and what should be using a gun like this because it takes a lot of skill to use it, right? Whether you're on PC or whether you're on console, I feel like it takes, uh, obviously it's easy to use on PC, fucking mouse and keyboard, um, but in console players especially, I respect those the most because if you're good with a sniper, you deserve that reward, right? You deserve that kill if you hit your shots consistently. Um, And just breaking that down and taking that away from them is shitty in my opinion so in my opinion it's not underperforming anyways we have noticed that the one shot down and out mechanic has been mentioned several times in balancing surveys as as a frustration for players we understand that the expectations to this rule i.e headshots limb hit the target is extremely far away pretty much all the stuff i said right so her sniper will kill one shot immediately if it's a headshot they won't kill or down one out immediately if it's a limb shot or if the target is too far away and for some reason, they say that can cause confusion. That's realistic, you know? If you shoot, I mean, technically, if you blow someone's arm off with that damn thing, you're going to die due to bleeding out. But this is Siege. This is different. Um, for all those reasons is why the sniper should still be how it is because it requires skill and it rewards the players for that skill. Um, with this in mind, we will remove this rule and turn her sniper into a normal weapon. I hate that. I really hate that. Increasing his base damage in the process. This means that damage will function the same as any other weapon against the armor and health of the target. Good news for Rook, as his armor is now useful against her. So that's somewhat of a buff for Rook against Kali, because like what they just mentioned, it actually does something against her sniper shots. So one body shot will kill a three speed operator, one body shot will down a two speed operator, and a one shot will damage a one speed operator. Um, so at least they're making this fair if you're three speed. So of course, if you're running around, uh, playing cav, um, or vigil, those three speeds, they will kill immediately. If it's a body shot, if it's a two speed, if you are, you know, uh, not pulse, if you are, um, let's say smoke or mute, you will get downed. Um, and if you are playing doc, <clears throat> and if you're playing doc or echo or rook, you're going to get just damage. It is worth noting that we will keep one of the excep exceptions noted above, the damage to limbs. I like that. As we do not want to reward the inaccurate shots, now that the base damage is higher, we feel that this fits with the logic of the weapon and is unlikely to generate the same confusion. I don't know where the confusion came from in the first place, because Kali Sniper was very easy to understand, even if you're a new player in this game. Again, the person that I was saying, saying and talking about earlier, that main Kali, was fucking new to the game. He started in like Operation C... See what the fuck operations still wave that is recent that is within the the year that's less than a year ago 
um, infirm to understand what the sniper can and cannot do and its basic functionalities for a new player, it's fucking mind-boggling to me and why they even changed Kali in the first place. I know I seem very passionate because it, it, it was fair how Kali was in the first place. Now they just kind of fucked her up in my opinion. Alright, next up we got my man man, we got Legion. So they removed the 1.5 scope from the T5. I 100% agree with this. As much as this hurts for me, because I main Legion, I used to main Legion, I'm starting to get back into a more. Um, the 1.5 is too clean and too good of a scope, and it feels too good for a lot of players. I know a lot of people like the new scopes. Me, I'm one of them. I love the two times, the 1.5. Um, uh, I think those are the two uh, optics that I really like in favor on, this, on these new ones. But like I was saying, I find this really fair and I like it because Legion is already a very oppressive defender. He always is, he always will be, no matter how uh, many nerfs he goes through. He's still annoying to go up against, correct? His T5 shreds and rips through people, has a uh, 26-round mag, has nearly a 1,000... What's his, uh, what's his thing called? A 1,000 rate... Uh, fire rate sorry I'm, I'm just fucking brain right now and of course you can see this is in the live build um i have holographic now instead of the actual 1.5 so they already took that away unfortunately i am sadly gonna have to run a uh, hollow on his gun now um but back to like what i was saying he has eight goo mines he can set them all up they're invisible by the way they do damage over time and he has a very strong primary and he has impact grenades for utility to make rotates or to doubt in a player he cannot reach with bullets that, in my opinion, is a strong operator, so taking away the scope is the least they can do to fix lesion. I 100% agree with this, and they targeted this by changing, and they targeted this in ranked. Looking at his pl place on the balancing matrix, lesion brings a lot to the team, making him one of the top roamers, exactly what I just said. From a primary gadget that offers strong map control by slowing down attackers and providing intel to an effective weapon, he has a great deal of utility without factoring in his scope. Since this was already the case before giving him the 1.5, we decided to remove the scope from his kit. Once again, I 100% agree with Ubi on this change for all the reasons they just listed. Reducing his killing potential slightly, we want to make space for other operators to find their footing in the roamer role, while also encouraging interesting roaming pairings to emerge. I like this. Uh, again, I, I'm, I'm going to keep saying this. I just completely agree with this uh, change. Lesion is a very strong operator. He's great for solo queuing. He's even more deadlier when you're with a coordinated team. Um, all right, what do they do to Lion? So they gave him a Claymore and then removed the Harbreeze charge. I like this change. I don't like how they gave him a Harbreeze charge in the first place. In my opinion, I'm not too fond of the idea of a Harbreeze charge. I don't like it for the certain operators they put it on at least. I feel like Lion is one of those operators that should not have it. Um, I can agree with Amaru, Nock, and who else do I agree with? Those are the only two I can think on top of my head right now. Um, but I don't like how they give the Harbor Reach charge to Ying, Lion. I think there's no that I don't like. But Ying and Lion, they have better secondary gadget utility to bring. Ying, for example, she has her smoke grenade. Smokes are a lot more useful than fucking Harbor Reach charge, especially if you already have a Harbor Reacher on your team. The only reason or the only way I will justify a bring in hard breach charge is if you have zero hard breaches at all, including if you don't have a Maverick. Again, for Lion, I will bring flashbangs just to burn up utility for my teammates. Populated target for this change is casual and top ranked. Training part of his gadget loadout with Buck, Lion is now the proud over on a Claymore. Given his role, a roamer focused on control, this shift better fits with his playstyle. I like this. I like this. Given the option, players were less likely to choose a hard recharge. We feel this change will be a more appealing option to Lion players. Okay, so that this alone is not going to say like, ooh, I'm going to play Lion now. Lion has always been a very strong attacker in my opinion, uh, especially on in his initial release. In fact, uh, again, if you guys don't know this, um, I started playing during Operation Chimera. So I saw how broken the Lion was. I wish I saw how broken Blackbeard was. <laughs> and, that, and those fucking horror stories and nightmares that I've heard about from my other friends. Um, but yes, I've seen this guy come from uh, being released as a wall hacking maniac to where his scans lasted for what felt like 10 seconds long. And if you moved, your outline is there for wall hacks for the entire 10 seconds that scan is going on. That was completely broken. Uh, Lion is still useful in my opinion. Sure, it's pings. It's not, uh, uh, 
as detailed um, precision on where the attacker is at, but it's enough info to give you to push in the site and apply pressure and making the defender choose, okay, am I going to get myself spotted or get myself killed by holding this angle? That's why I like Lion so much. All right, Malusi. So right off the bat, they removed the angle grip from the MP5. Again, unfortunately, this sucks, but I 100% agree with this. This is the exact same thing what they did to Legion is what they're doing to Malusi. <clears throat> she, on her initial release with Operation Still Wave, in my opinion, Still Wave was a great season for operators because it introduced a new, very strong hard breacher and a new, strong and annoying utility-based operator, Malusi. She already has three bulletproof Sonic Banshees that have a large radius that slow down and make a humming noise um, when attackers get in that vicinity. That is annoying. That's more annoying than Legion, in my opinion, and it takes up more utility uh, to burn it up than Legion does. Populated target by this change is ranked. Malusi continues to have a high presence in matches per uh, the balancing matrix, combined with a strong wind delta. By removing the angle grip, her presence is expected to see a reduction back to previous values. She is a valuable asset to teams, but the effectiveness of her MP5 made it possible to outpace roamers at their own game. We also intend to make adjustments to Malusi's gadget in the future. As gadget changes require more iteration and testing, this will come later on. This angle grip change is more immediate, however, as we do as we do want to have something in short term to address Malusi's current performance. So again, I can 100% agree with Ubisoft on this. Uh, she first started off with the, with the T5 Legion's SMG, and that was already broken because she has C4s, uh, impact nades, a broken gadget, and a T5. And she's a 3 speed. That's insane. That was insane right off the rip. Now she has an MP5 without the angle grip with the vertical. MP5 is still a decent, it's a strong, it's a good medium tier weapon to use. Um, it's not the top of its performance, but it's also not the bottom bracket of defending guns. So MP5 vertical grip is is a good medium choice for Malusi. Uh I hate this change so much on Mira. I'm a Mira main myself. I absolutely loved the 1.5. So that's what they're doing. They're removing the 1.5 scope from the Vector 45 ACP. <sighs> it sucks. Um, I'm only running Hollow on her. Anyways, the populated target change is top ranked or ranked games. Um, <laughs> I just want to cry. Like they introduced all these amazing sites and they gave them to the wrong operators in my opinion. Malusi didn't have them, thank God. Uh, they gave 1.5 to Mira. They gave 1.5 to Legion. That was a mistake on their own because those two are very strong operators uh, that no attacker wants to go up against, especially in Mira. Um, I felt like they should have never gave them those sites in the first place. Anyways, as a result of her perceived ability to hold longer angles with a 1.5 site, Mira's ban rates have become disproportionately high. Removing this site will reduce her killing potential back to previous values while still, maintain it, while still maintaining her strong utility in matches. We hope to see a decrease in bans, giving her more chances to see active play. So honestly, I don't think, and apparently they have evidence of this, uh, that Mira has been banned more specifically because she has the 1.5 site or since the introduction of the 1.5 site on her Vector 45. Um, Mira has always been an extremely strong defender since her release since Velvet Shell along with Jackal. Um, I, I find it hard to believe that people and especially Platinum's decided, decided to say, hey, let's ban Mira because she has a 1.5. Ooh, um, that's just dumb to me. Also, Mira, in my opinion, is also a balanced operator especially for the maps she's pretty much balanced by the maps uh because there's vertical play above or below the site all oh, right we're going to the we're going to be talking about the operator that started all of this bullshit all the way back to the pro league game to where i don't know this uh, team specifically but i saw the clip it was on consulate sophia was holding down a line of sight and project the room looking down a lobby on circle desk where the diffuser was planted and down and it was two operators and of course points are off for those of you that don't watch pro league or don't fully understand what's happened and why they made this change specifically to her sophia and ella is because of this literal match that happened it was a 1v2 situation points are off so they cannot tell if they down a sophia so when they thought they did i believe mute was one of the operators i don't remember the other operator that i had but mute went up spiral cell stairs 
to try to confront the Sophia. Sophia killed Mew, and the remaining defender tried to defuse and try to get an angle on Sophia. Couldn't. Was running out of time to defuse her. Tried to defuse. Sophia had an angle and killed the defending operator, meaning that the defenders won the round with Sophia's withstand ability. In the five or six years Pro League has been introduced to Rainbow Six Siege, this has never fucking happened before. And the one and only time this has happened, they decided to completely remove and completely uh, uh, just destroy the lore factor in this game. And I fucking hate it. I know it's not angry right now. Um, that's because, again, I'm passionate about the game, right? It makes the game fun with this kind of stuff. Um, I respect everybody's opinion. If you agree with the withstand being removed, cool for you. But in my opinion, and for the majority of people, I want to say I'm, I'm with the majority. I'm usually a minority when I come to uh, disagreeing or agreeing with things. But the majority, I'm with. Um, her withstand does not have that much of an impact. That was a rare thing that happened. That happened one time. This is kind of a rant I'm doing at this point. <laughs> um, even the casual, even in ranked, you may you will see those clips to where Sophia gets you know popped back up and she might knife someone or shoot someone back in the head and 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 uh, plant the bomb or whatever right. But that's rare. It doesn't happen that often. It's not. It's game changing, but rarely right. It's a nice thing to have because if we're going to be talking about talk uh, removing her withstand effect let's talk about doc doc has that same ability as long as he has one stem in his pistol and he gets down and he's within a reasonable distance in that same situation that whole situation could have been flipped right see it this way i just don't realize that the whole situation could have been flipped to where the last defender could have been doc correct he could have one stem left he could be trying to defuse it in a 1v2 situation he gets down, but they can't tell. He stems himself. Not only does he not have 5 HP, he has 75 HP because he gets a stem boost and more health when he comes back, right? He picks himself up, he kills the two attackers, and he defuses the bomb. What if that situation happened? Would they remove Doc's ability? Would they remove the ability for Doc to stem revive himself? Think about that. Think about that. And again... So that's my main argument right there is Doc. My second argument is Finca. This could be the same thing in the same situation without Sophia. So let's say it was Finca and I don't know, fucking Fuse. Okay? It's a 2v2, same situation, except Finca is nowhere near to help out Fuse and for whatever reason. Finca gives a boost. Fuse picks himself up. He gets up from the boost. He has that slight health boost along with the benefits of the Finca boost, such as... Um, no recoil, right? And faster ADS time. He kills the two players, preventing it, and they win. Finca's ability is supposed to do that, right? Why isn't Sophia's ability supposed to do that? Okay? Obviously, the, the Finca, the, my example of Finca and Fuse, that won't start any controversy because her adrenaline surge is supposed to do that. Isn't Sophia's withstand supposed to do that as well? Please tell me if I'm wrong. What is the whole point of doing that if it's not for the purpose of clutching up around in that situation, in those circumstances? I understand that they gave her the ability because it's a lore factor, just how they gave Ella the extra mind ability because it's also a lore factor. Versus Finca, this was actually built into her character and this is meant for her to do, is to pick up and revive the teammates without physically being there. Again, I'm sorry if I seem mad, it's just, it's a lot that, it's shitty how video games nowadays become to where the pro leagues or someone in competitive play can bitch and nag about a, a specific feature in the game and the creators of that game will fucking remove it or do something about it. Because the minority of the, of the competition and the minority of the pro league aspect of the game is getting bitched by only one of those players. And the two companies I'm really talking about is Ubisoft, of course, obviously, and Epic Games. Because I remember when we all used to play Fortnite, um, and I, I was very serious about Fortnite too. Um, I remember they made some changes because of the pro players was bitching about A, B, and C, right? Literally, they're doing this change again because of, this is not the first time pro players has bitched and cried, and Ubisoft has done something about it and removed it. Goyo is another example. I agree. Goyo had a lot of shields. He he came with three Vulcan shields on release with impact grenades and a, and a C4. 
along with a Vector 45. He was a very strong operator and very underrated for the majority of players, but in Pro League, he was a powerhouse and a madman. And for that factor, they removed that shield because Pro League was bitching about it. And they're doing the same thing with Sophia. The same exact thing. It's just fucking mind-blowing to me. <sighs> Anyways. <sighs> Remove resistance to concussion effects. Remove withstand, and they reduce the impact grenade explosive damage range to 2 meters, almost 3 meters. <laughs> so same thing what they did with Ash and her breaching charge. They did the same thing with her impact grenades. Uh, she doesn't have that large of a radius anymore going underneath to destroy that utility. Popular to talk about this change is casual top ranked in pro league. We all know this is a pro league change. No one does this shit in casual. Rarely is it ever done in ranked. This is a pro league change. Sophia is considered a strong pick with the second highest attacker presence, as you can see in the balancing matrix above. Similar to Ella, we are removing some of the hidden mechanics that are not explicitly explained in the game, and instead stem from the character's lore. For Sophia, this means removing her concussion resistance and withstand effect which we do not see affecting her power or presence. We also we have also observed Sophia's ability to destroy gadgets placed on the top ceiling floor with uh, impact grenades. To balance her currently high presence, we are decreasing their explosive range, slightly reducing her versatility as a utility denier from below. Wow. What a fucking video, huh, guys? <laughs> So I do agree with Ubisoft, this change will not affect her pick rate whatsoever. Like what I was saying in this 5 minute rant, or I don't know how long it's going for, I don't know how long this video is going to be. Obviously I want to say the majority of time I'm spending talking about Sophia. Anyways though, um, I do agree this will not affect her pick rate at all. She's still a great operator, she still has 2 impact nades, she still have two concussion aids. She sells utility. Her gun is still intact. Um, she's still a two and two operator. Still easy to play. She's the same overall with virtually no change because the withstand ability was not used that often. And when it was, it was a powerhouse and a big dick move. And they took that away. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I apologize if I seemed angry um, or if I came off wrong. It's just that I care about this game. I enjoy the lore factor. I enjoy the stories, the personalities, um, just the connection with all the characters in Rainbow Six Siege and in this game. I may have not played this game since 2015, but I played this game for almost three years now, and I'm passionate about it. Which is why I'm making this video. Which is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Which is why I make the content that I make. Without taking too much of your time. <laughs> I hope you guys have a good day. Peace.